All right, here we are back on tower. Um, I kind of want to go into uh, accelerate right now. I kind of want to do bed zoom again, but single player. Just kind of mess around on the track, see what kind of like lap time I can get. I haven't like really done much accelerate yet. Like I still only have ten thousand XP in accelerate, which is like pitiful. You know, like I've only done like a couple of races. Uh, so just kind of like chill out and play this. Uh, see if I can, you know, kind of get the feel for this a little bit more. I was really digging this track when I first played it, and I think after I do this, I might kind of, like, go into ball race really quick, and kind of work my way from there. But yeah, see what kind of, like, lap times I can get. Because we got, uh, we got two five-lap races to do, or two five-lap time trials, I guess, in this case. So I'm interested to see how, uh, I can do. Uh, nothing really crazy new with me, you know, still doing the videos every now and then. I've been playing Deadly Premonition too, on uh, on Switch. If you never played Deadly Premonition before, it is a super surrealist Twin Peaks style uh, horror game that's also a mystery that makes literally no sense but all the sense. It is one of the most engaging super Japanese, like just kind of open world horror experiences you can ever have. Uh, I love the first Deadly Premonition, but the second Deadly Premonition is a Switch only game. Which really has confused a lot of people, myself included. And not only that, uh, it performs like it performs terribly. Like the game barely runs at like 10 FPS. Like I'm not exaggerating when I say 10. Like I mean like it does drop into the single digits quite often. Uh, the level of detail is awful. The aliasing in is awful. I've had about I think six soft locks so far and about three straight up crashes. Uh, in the first like 11 hours of play, I've had one save file or uh, one save spot bug so bad that you can't get an image anymore in the game, and I had to uh, load a save that was like 40 minutes early just to continue. But I keep going through because it is such a fun game. Like writing wise, it's so good, and I'm willing to put up with the flaws because of just how unlike Deadly Premonition is to like anything else. If you've never played the first one, it is the better game, and it is the one to definitely start with because. Uh, the second game is a prequel and a sequel at the same time. Uh, don't really want to go into it further than that. But, dude, Deadly Premonition 1's on everything. It's just very broken on PC. Do not pick up the PC version of Deadly Premonition 1. Unless you're willing to install a few mods. And are willing to accept a few crashes here and there. Like, get the 360 version, the PS3 version. There's even a Switch version called Origins. Although Origins and 360 are based on the original one, and then PS3 and PC have the director's cut, which add a few things and change a few things to the story and gameplay. I think I prefer the uh, director's cut more, but no matter which way you go, Deadly Premonition 1 is a freaking fantastic game to play. And then hopefully if you enjoy that, by by the time you get around to that, 2 will actually be kind of fixed up. It needs a lot of patch, it needs a lot of love. Like, it was at least a year out from like being ready. Quite the feel of it. My god, I'm having a blast with it. Uh, and then today, I have a new Sega Saturn coming in. Uh, I bought one earlier this year, but now I need to buy a Model 1 to install a mod called the Fenrir to let me uh, play games directly off an SD card. So uh, I have that coming in the mail today, and I'll be setting up that mod, and I'll be doing a lot of Saturn stuff in my stream, in my free time, maybe for a video at some point. I'm excited. That's all that's really going on with me. Just had a fruit smoothie. In fact, I'm still drinking the fruit smoothie. Like I'm still, uh, I'm still attacking it. It was called the sunshine, which was mango, pineapple, mango, pineapple, orange juice, uh, and banana. I want to say, really good. Uh, almost at the end, and I also had a uh, had a uh, sandwich with it from Tropical Smoothie Cafe. So good. Mm. Ready. Still working on that. Still drinking that. Keep me nice and cool on this uh, rather toasty, uh, toasty uh, day. It's getting very, very hot in my region. Still getting hotter and hotter every single day. Not a fan, but I am a fan of my brand new fan. I have kind of blowing some fresh air in my back. If my fan's audible, my bad. Uh, will not change it though, because I kind of needed to survive at the moment. Uh, it is a beautiful Honeywell fan that has like two blades in it. Oh my god keep me nice and uh, nice and chilly, which is what I need because I cannot get AC in the room I'm in. So, I will take the fan noise in all my recordings and my streams, and as I try and sleep, if it means I can be comfortable. 
or more comfortable. Because no matter what, you're not going to make this room more com very comfortable. It's going to be hot as a bastard, but now it's just slightly less hot. But yeah, uh, I think I'm like all caught up with the uh, streamy video game, what have I been eating sort of goodness. Uh, I bought a shakaroni from uh, Papa John's the other day. Shakaroni is like the laziest pizza ever, but I wanted to get it to say I got it. And so I had a pizza box with Shaq's face on it. Uh, so now I can say I've done that. Wow, I'm doing bad this lap. Uh, it was just a pepperoni pizza from Papa John's, except it had Shaq branding. Cool. <laughs> That's the excitement of my life. I have like a bit of a sore throat going on. But I think it's just mainly from uh, talking so much today. And like yesterday, I actually was on a podcast yesterday for one of my Twitch team members. Uh, his name is Hitch. He's a big retro streamer. Uh, he wanted me to join him for a talk about the first Sonic the Hedgehog game. So I went on his podcast called The Hitching Post. Um, and we talked about Sonic, and it was a very good conversation for like an hour and a half. Uh, I played through the first Sonic all over again for the first time in like 10 years. And yeah, that game is uh, not the best Sonic to say the least. Um, Sonic's kind of weird, right? The first Sonic, because they definitely marketed it as a fast game. But the first Sonic game is like a very slow, like methodical platformer, like a borderline puzzle platformer at times. So it's actually amazing they kind of got away with like the fast marketing for it. Uh, when Sonic 1's really not like that, it's like when Sonic 2 hit, that's like when the game itself became like a very fast platformer that everyone thinks of. But the first game is a very slow, methodical game. Alright. We had a good talk about that. Um, and after I finish up, what am I saying? Like, uh, yeah, like game wise, right now, uh, outside of playing Sonic, some pinball games, and Deadly Prem 2, there hasn't really been much to talk about besides Dead by Daylight. But, like, everyone knows I play that game seven days a week, so. My, <laughs> my, uh, my gaming habits lately have not been the most exciting. Really. But I've been happy with it. In the last lap, we on the last lap. I think the best lap I got here was like 46 seconds to kind of like segue back into the game. Which ain't terrible, I don't think. But I think 46 is the best I could handle. Okay. I kind of want to do ball race, maybe. Let me see. I only got 1,000 XP for that, though. That's a feels. Oh, I gotta awkwardly wait so I can leave. Any second now. There we go. Yeah, Accelerate's pretty fun. I prefer much more single player than multi, because, you know, at least it's smooth and single at the moment. Okay, before I hop in Ball Race, um... Are there, like, any stages I really want to collect melons or anything on? I only got 18 melons total on, uh, Event Horizon. You know what? Let's go melon collecting on Galaxy. I need 500 more. I need to play on it 7 more times. 27 more times. Let's go on Galaxy. Let's just go for, like, get getting all the melons. It's also a very easy track, and it's fun to look at, I think. Hmm. Okay. I'm gonna be a good collector. Boop, boop. Hmm. But you know what? I, I feel like I just kind of shot the shit about everything in like nine minutes on this video. And I'm like, what else do I talk about? <laughs> I still struggle with the YouTube kind of like carrying a conversation of my, uh, my, my own sort of thing. I don't care if I die. I've already got this uh, without dying before. Whatever. Um, I'm still, like, such, you know, like, in the streamer mindset of having a chat to talk to. That without having a chat, like, when I do a video, like, it, you know, it's weird. Like, I, I struggle with segues sometimes. I think it very much shows. But, you know, it's like, you know, I've done all this in Tower so many times now. So, like, I just kind of treat Tower as my shoot-the-shit sort of series. And, uh, I think I've shot all the shit I can really shoot at this point. So now I guess we're just going to kind of chill out and collect melons and discuss how good my smoothie is, I guess. 
Uh, discuss, uh, oh, you know what? I started watching, uh, Juan, uh, Origins on Netflix. Which is, like, kind of like the prequel, I guess, to, uh, The Grudge. Or Juan The Grudge. It's actually kind of bad. I don't even know why I brought this up. It wasn't great. I've only watched the first two episodes, and I'm like, yeah, I'd rather just watch The Grudge films. Like, Netflix, you tried. But, uh, this is the best I can say for you right now. I don't think I'm gonna finish it. I think I'll rather, uh, I'd rather go into the Unsolved Mystery series they just rebooted. Or I've been watching The Floor is Lava, which, if it wasn't for, like, the really awful commentary, I'd love it so much more. Because if you haven't seen it, it's a game show Netflix is doing where they quite literally made Floor is Lava, like, obstacle courses. Where you gotta, like, kind of, like, climb over, like, Easter Island heads and, um... Like, knock down bridges and, like, go across, like, these walls and, like, not touch the ground because the ground has, like lava but it's really just kind of like food colored like water and shit just flying all around but yeah they just make like this big obstacle course in a house and they just flood the house like with red lava or red water and you gotta like watch like a group of three try and like find their way around this place and like get out in game show format it's cool for what it is but the commentary is just so bad it takes you out of it it's like worse than like Nickelodeon game show like commentary. Like it feels less serious than that. And like when your commentary is less serious than like Legends of the Hidden Temple or Guts, like there I think there's like a pretty big problem. But the concept's cool, so I've watched a few episodes. And I want to start uh, watching this film called Polaroid because I heard about this uh, back when I used to work in my my bowling alley. I had a uh, movie buff friend who was like, "You gotta watch Polaroid. It's about people that find a Polaroid camera." And of course it's haunted, it's like when they take someone's picture, that person ends up dying really shortly, like, thereafter. And I'm like, cool, I'll give it a go, and like, now it's on Netflix, or I guess it has been on Netflix for a while. So. I want to start that and actually watch through it. It sounds fun. I doubt it's, like, any good. And then I saw this film called, uh, or started... Uh, to consider watching this film called Death Ship, which is, like, a really cheesy, like, 80s film about, like, an old Nazi torture warship found in the middle of the ocean that people kind of go on to. And, of course, like, it's still occupied by, like, ghosts and, like, the souls of those lost. And I, I found a copy, and I kind of want to watch it, but I know it's actually terrible. <laughs> but, like, the concept's so cool to me, and it looks just like, um... A film that came out, like, in 2002 called Ghost Ship. Like, the cover and everything looks just like it. And I have fond memories of seeing Ghost Ship in theaters back when I was a, uh, A lad of, like, 11 or 12 years old. So, like, I just kind of want to watch it because of that. Because the cover just reminded me so much of it. See, so maybe that'll be a thing, too. We shall see. Man, again, the 500 Melon's gonna take a while here. They don't really put many out on the stage. Which is what it is. But I think that kind of like more or less covers the uh, the whole film aspect to me right now and like TV aspect because I don't really get to watch much. I mainly like watch like a lot of YouTube videos of like other game creators and just see like what they're doing and like some like other creators too. Like I love watching Tyler Tube. Uh, he's been super fun to watch lately. But I've been watching like a lot of like survival horror retrospectives. Like Avalanche Reviews does some. Uh, I was watching one. Oh my god, what was his name? Like, oh my god, Blue Ribbon, maybe? Or something. I forget what his name was. I was just watching him, too. But he did, like, this two and a half hour, like, long video on Resident Evil 2 Remake. Like, what they did right and wrong. And, like, it was a very fun thing to watch. Because I love, like, watching other people's criticisms of games I really love. And survival horror is a genre I really enjoy a lot. So I love, like, seeing different perspectives. Like, on Silent Hills, and Resident Evil, and Dino Crisis, and, like, PT, and... Outlast, Amnesia, like, all of them. Alien Isolation, like, I love Big Breakdown videos like that. I mean, just kind of getting into, like, what people think of them. Because I am a massive, massive horror fan. Hence why I'm talking about, like, freaking Nazi warship movies from, like, freaking early 80s. Horror does it for me. I love a good spook. Right, cool. Let's get up on here. We're gonna level eight. 
Hmm, maybe after this I'll catch like one or two fish really quick. Depends how long the rest of this course takes me. Because I think my mail is actually already here. I think I already got to set up my Saturn. Because I want to get that done before I go to sleep today. We'll see. Maybe I'll go hop in the plaza for a quick fish or two. This is, uh, like I've been saying, I'm going to keep doing that until I get my 100 fish achievement. At least that's the plan. We shall see. No guarantees this video. I'm sure, like, all of you are in the edge of your seat being like, uh, I wanna, I wanna see this dude catch some fish. <laughs> but, uh, we'll see. Alright. Boop. Get a little bit of a boop there. At least the melons aren't, like, in hard-to-reach spots here. That makes me a happy boy -o. So even though I don't think I'm going to have the uh, the 500 I need, that's fine. Because I should be really close by the end of this run. So I'm getting like 20 per level. Which will bring me to like 450 or so by the end of this, I think. Uh, this is not, you know, for like good race times. Like this is just strictly for the uh, for the melons. I need my melons. Okay, that should be that should be a full melon run. That's thirty. Hmm. I'll be kind of really close by the end of this, actually. Depending on the uh, the melon to level ratio. No, this course is really fun. If you want to get into ball race, all the easy courses are so like so easy. Like, they do not lie when they say they're easy, and like, they're really, they're fun to get into. I do enjoy my ball race quite a bit in this. I find it super relaxing. Even though I don't play anywhere near enough. Everything? 27? I'm also getting close to my, uh, my 500k uh, XP wise, which means I'll get like an RC orb, I believe I can fly. <laughs> oh man. The spinny stuff always confuses me, but I did it. I made it through, I did, I did. Why'd I do that? Why? Relaxing, he says, as he goes off the stage. Oh, shit. Actually, I should have took advantage of the speed burst. I don't really have a lot of time left here. Can't make me redo it. There's no way I can make this happen. Yep, too late. We gotta do us a redo, huh? I was a dummy. But you know what? More melons for me, I guess. In fact, I got through that pretty quick, and now we're uh, currently at 100% melon right here. But yeah, I think I'm gonna forego the fishing. Uh, this video, because still got a few more levels. We're already like 20 minutes deep here, so eh, no point. Ugh. Let's just focus on our melons and climb right on up. If I make noises like I'm struggling, it's gonna make the climb that much more dramatic. So that's why I do it. Easy. What do we got? Last level was a 17 melon level at max. Unless I missed a few. Like, I know I missed two, like, on the speed bumps. Or, like, the speed arrows. So I kind of, like, took that into uh, to account. Which means that level, I think, oh, yeah, really only has, like, 17. It's not many. 
my uh, my my 25 per level sort of dream or 20 per level dream kind of got shattered by that. This one was 17 as well. They're skimping on me. They knew I was trying to grind this out and they're like, just screw you. You're not gonna get what you want, what you really, really want. And I'm trying to tell them what I want, what I really, really want, and they're not gonna give it to me. Very unfortunate. That's okay. All I want to hear right now is that Sunshine Day theme play, where it's like, yo, you did it. You wasted your time, you collected these melons that do nothing for you in single player anyways, because they're just there in single player. They don't get you anything. Besides pride and accomplishment. <clears throat> and maybe just maybe that's all I need. Maybe I just need the pride and accomplishment. You know? Joop. Nailed it. 17 again, huh? Just the magic number here. Okay. Last level. Oh. No, 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 no. You see, game, you're gonna let me go on a melon collecting frenzy here, because you like me. You too, Pixel Tail. You're not gonna let me go on my melon collecting spray. I cannot get the momentum I need. Crap. Alright, screw that. We're just gonna finish this off uh, one off with 17 again. I gotta go fast. Can I make it? I don't know if I can make it. Uh. Oh, yeah, I'm fine. And we got 19. Good enough. Let's see what the melon count was. Because it's probably going to take, like, one more play of Galaxy to get all I need. Let's see. Ball race, where are we at? Damn, I barely got anything. I still have another 125 to get. Oof. So yeah, we'll have to play Galaxy one more time to get it. We're not going to do it this video, because it's been like 20 minutes, and I kind of want to <clears throat> finish up my smoothie and get my Saturn uh, finished up, because I think it already came in. USPS is usually here by now, so i got to actually check outside and see if it's there. But uh, we're going to call it there. So thank you guys very much for watching. I'll make another video whenever I feel like making another video, hopefully in the next couple of days. Y'all have a lovely day. And toodles.